Welcome to this month's Nutrition Pearl, Food Insecurity in Pediatric Celiac Disease, presented by the Council for Pediatric Nutrition Professionals. The U.S. Department of Agriculture defines food insecurity as a lack of consistent access to enough food for an active, healthy life. Feeding America projects that 42 million people, including 13 million children, experienced food insecurity in 2021. A recent study from our team at Boston Children's Hospital found that 24% of pediatric celiac patients experienced general in food insecurity during the COVID-19 pandemic, and that when asked specifically about gluten-free food, 20% of the patients screened positive for gluten-free food insecurity. Another study found that one in six patients with celiac disease are food insecure. Where is this food insecurity coming from? We know that processed gluten-free foods are consistently more expensive than their gluten-containing counterparts, ranging from 4 to over 800% more expensive. In addition to costing more, the nutritional content of gluten-free food items is often poorer than conventional food items. In our Boston Children's Hospital study, 1 in 10 households with a child on a gluten-free diet that was food insecure reported eating gluten due to limitations on accessing gluten-free foods. Intentional gluten ingestion doubled during the pandemic, and the odds of intentional gluten ingestion increased if multiple household members were on a gluten-free diet. Another study from the University of Calgary found that less than one quarter of food insecure celiac patients adhered to a gluten-free diet. In our Boston Children's Hospital Celiac Clinic, we use the Hunger Vital Signs Screener to screen for food insecurity. This is a two-question screening tool. You can also modify it to include the term gluten-free. You can add this screener to a pre-visit survey, clinical assistant check-in, physician or dietitian assessment, or enrollment in a hospital-based support group. The options for replying to the screener include often true, sometimes true, or never true. A response of never true would be a negative screen. While this patient is not positive for food insecurity today, we know that food insecurity status can change rapidly depending on social situations and jobs, so please continue to screen at each subsequent clinic visit. A response of often true or sometimes true is considered a positive screen. For patients who screen positive, they should be referred to social work and offered resources for food access. While a food insecure family may seem overwhelming at first, there are simple resources your clinic can put together to support families with celiac disease who are struggling to access food. First, enroll the child in a school food program that offers free breakfast and lunches. These programs are funded by state and federal resources and are required by law to provide gluten-free foods to students with celiac disease. Schools should provide gluten-free breakfast and lunch options that reasonably meet the same nutritional content at meals served to other students. We want to see them offered a protein, dairy, grain, fruits, and vegetables. Next, work on creating a list of food pantries in your area that regularly stock gluten-free foods. It's helpful to form a relationship with these pantries so you can let them know when a family may need food. Ask your social work team to help enroll the family in federal and state food assistance programs like SNAP and WIC. While gluten-free options are challenging in these programs, families can utilize the benefits for fresh fruits and vegetables, dairy, and protein. Finally, consider reaching out to local grocery stores to donate gift cards to help food insecure families purchase foods and work with your hospital philanthropy team to raise funds to enroll patients in food support programs like the Food Equality Initiative. The Food Equality Initiative is a program where clinicians can refer patients to get monthly boxes of food that meet the requirements of their special dietary needs. There is a cost for every patient referral, so this option typically requires a donor to offset the costs. 